Okay, this week, feeling a little bit of the love for the Takamar. We're not talking about the 50 1.4. New, 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 new. That one gets all the love. A little 35 millimeter here, an F2. And again, doesn't quite get all the love. The 3.5 seems to get all the love more than the two, which is kind of weird because most people want that fast lens. But everybody says the 3.5 is better. Who's to say? Well, maybe you, well, maybe me. But I got the F2 anyway, so that's what we're going to be looking at this week. The Takamar, super multi-coated. And it's an F2, so let's get at it. Here I am. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. All right, this week, as the intro just told you, I'm looking at my Takamar. Everybody loves the Takamar. But what Takamar does everybody love? The 50 1.4. There's reason to love it. I've got three of them. Uh, obviously, don't need three of them. But it's got so much love out there that I just couldn't resist getting a Takamar, a super Takamar, a super multicolored, coated Takamar, and uh, SMC Takamar. You know, it's just Takamar, Takamar. Um, but the one oddball in the group uh, that I have anyway, of course, there's many other great Takamars, but the one I've got um, breaking up that trend is a 35 millimeter. And this is, um, this was their last model or last version of the 35 F2, I forgot to say. Uh, that's an important aspect of this, of course. It's, uh, uh, it's the fastest aperture of the wide angle Takamars. Um, you know, it was built through the uh, 60s and 70s. Actually, it ended off, you know, again, ended off, this was the last version of it. Um, built into to, uh, 19, 1974 was the super multi-coated Takamar. Then they went into SMC Takamars and SMC Pentax and so forth. But this was, again, the last of the breed, the dying breed. So, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit about, uh, you know, um, Takamar, where it came from. You know, it's obviously its parent company, Pentax, but going further back, um, you know, the parent parent company is Asahi Optical Company, uh, Japan. And they were, you know, they started off in the industry back in the 1920s. But, you know, if you know anything about uh, Japanese optical um, history, you know, they weren't all that great uh, back in the day. You know, it's pretty much the Germans who ruled the uh, optical world, you know, the uh, Carl Zeiss group and uh, Lights, or Leica, um, the Schneiders and the Meyer Optic Gerlitz and so forth and so on. Um, but the Japanese uh, made good students and they soon caught up through the 60s and 70s and kind of took over from there. Um, as far as market leaders go. But, um, but anyway, they, you know, developing the Takamar line came out in uh, well, 1957. Actually, Asahi uh, developed the F M42 screw mount. Um, you know, they had other screw mounts out there. Uh, Leica, you know, had a screw mount, the uh, L39 or LTM, they call it like a th thread mount. But the M42 was a uh, Asahi um, configuration. And of course it was matched to their uh, Pentax cameras and, and so forth and so on. So 1957, they came out with the, uh, came out with the uh, M42 screw mount to which many other lens manufacturers started to copy from that, that point on. Uh, and then the first version of this 35 um, was again in the early 60s and it was uh, the Super Takamar and it was a single coated version uh, but what made again the difference in the in the uh, industry is they had a, uh, a manual and an auto switch for the aperture so you could preset 
or just do it manually. It was, the choice was yours, but you know, other lenses of the day um, didn't give you the choice. You, it was either one or the other type thing. So again, they were, they were uh, groundbreakers or trendsetters in, in that regard. Um, and then, you know, after that came the, uh, into the 70s came the, uh, uh, early 70s came the super multi-coated Takamars, which had multi, multiple coatings, of course, on them. And, um, you know, that M42 mount, as it went through the 60s and 70s, later became the PK, the Pentax mount. Um, so anyway, so this, you know, I have, again, the last version. There were four different uh, uh, iterations of this particular lens, and uh, I have the last one. Um, now, the build is just like every other Takamar. It's uh, built very well. Uh, it's very usable, very user-friendly. It's small, 49-inch thread mount, which matches, you know, again, so many other uh, lenses out there. So it's great for sharing hoods or, or filters or anything else of, in, in that matter. Um, you know, again, it's easy to use. It has very short uh, focus throw, so it's very quick to very quick to focus. Of course, manual. You know, it's a vintage lens, right? From the 60s and 70s, um, so it's a manual manual focus. But even being something that's uh, you know younger than I am, but not by not by much. So old. It's uh, nice and smooth. Unlike me, that's not so nice and smooth. As you can see, the uh, facial growth is starting to develop a little more here. I'm pretty soon, I'll think I'll be starting to look like Colonel Sanders or something for KFC. But anyway. Um, you start calling me Harley. The, uh, you know, again, the, the, the usability of this lens is, is quite nice. Uh, it was intended, you know, it was designed for, you know, photojournalism. Um, you know, so it's, it doesn't have the zippy colors and, and sharpness and contrast and all that stuff that the, that the, uh, the 3.5 uh, model is known for, you know, this was, this was a working lens, get out there, tick, 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 get your pictures of, uh, whatever events going on or crisis happening. Um, so it was a, it was kind of a workhorse lens, but it's still a Takamar. So it's still a nice lens. You know, the, the, uh, out of focus background is fairly nice as long as your background isn't too busy. Uh, so the, the quality of that called the bokeh is, you know, it's pleasing for a 35 anyway. Uh, it can be quite painterly um, in the background. But as I said, the, it's, it's, uh, it's brother or sister, the 3.5 is, is uh, rumored to be the better lens. Now at F2, you know, it's, it's usable again, but it's not as sharp as wide open as the 3.5 is wide open so therefore that's why the talk is in that way but it's still usable as i said it's still pretty good f2 f4 5.6 obviously it's going to get better um you know i'll show you a couple pictures of uh, dylan at f2 and then i switched up to um f4 uh just to show you uh, what the difference is between f2 and f4 so we'll uh, I'll get you a shot of that but as always too um, I'll get you a shot of the I'll try to focus in on the end of my Canon M50 that I'm using to film this video you know I try to focus in on the nameplate on the end of the 15 to 45 um, EFM lens and uh, you know just to show you you know what what the potential is on this thing anyway um, uh, Some specs on it, you know, it's eight elements in seven groups six aperture blades uh, 240 grams It's um, close focus is 40 centimeters or 0.4 of a meter uh, And it goes from f2 to f16 so um, You know again, that's the the specs on these things so Again, it's, it's, a, it's a great lens, um, it's not expensive, 
which is nice because some of the other Takamaras, obviously the 50s and the 55, also pretty pricey. So um, again, let me just get you a shot of the uh, the end of the end of the lens here. Uh, let me try to focus in as best I can. It'll be right there. One, two, three. All right. Um, now I was going to say, let me show you at F4. Uh, see if that makes a, any kind of drastic difference for me. Um, hold on, I'm going to have to bring down the shutter speed to lighten it up a bit. There we go. Bring that down to 125. All right, so let me again zero in. See, it's a very touchy, very touchy focus ring. One, two, three. All right, so that's at F4. So, um, you know, again, let me, let me put that back to where it was. I usually like to shoot it at about 500 or so for my, uh, my son who runs around like a little little madman at 14 months old so yeah I'll show you pictures actually show you pictures of dylan right here all right so that was that was my super multi-coated takamar um, 35 millimeter f2 uh, again it was the, the fastest of the wide angle lenses for the uh, for the Takamars um, I would recommend it you know as much as the 3.5 gets all the love and everything this f2 is nice because again f2 is you know you might find yourself in lower light situations or whatever that you know you may require uh, a faster aperture as opposed to leaning on your ISO and whatnot so I would definitely recommend this recommend this lens to you. Um, so with that said, um, what else? How about my little plug for Luminar? Eh? Luminar is my uh, the tool that I use when I'm when I'm uh, editing my photos. It's a software. It's a uh, it's a going rate about eighty nine dollars. I think it's on sale right now. And of course, it depends on when you watch this video. The sale may be over. But it's worth checking anyway because it's $89. $89. That's, uh, that's pretty economical for a, a full-blown editing, uh, photo editing software. Uh, you know, compare that to Lightroom and, you know, the Photoshop and all the others out there. And, uh, and it's a bargain. And it's yours for life. You download it. You put it on your computer. You never have to upgrade. You never have, to have another payment after that. Uh, whenever, they, whenever they update that software, you update along with them. They may have full-blown versions that upgrade to completely different things and they'll cost you more money, but nobody makes you buy them, right? It's, you can stick, stick with what you have. So do yourself a favor, click on that link below in the description, you'll get $10 off. Uh, so hey, it's $79 still, better than 89, right? A little kickback for uh, Dr. Scott, because hey, as a teacher, we don't make a lot of money, so I'm not getting rich off of this. And uh, you know, it's not like I make a million bucks. One million dollars. But other than that, um, how can you help support my channel? Well, you can subscribe. That's right. You can subscribe. And then for a third time's a charm thing with a double finger, subscribe. And because the algorithm also, besides subscriptions, they also love the thumbs up thing or the likes or whatever you want to call it. So uh, give me a like while you're at it. And the thumbs up girls will attest to that. And I guess last but not least, um, in this world of COVID and everything that's going around out there, you know, this new Delta strain is pretty evil. Uh, so we're finding out here in Vietnam, you know, when we're just starting to get some kind of vaccines rolling off the line. Uh, I know I don't have one yet, uh, but us teachers were, hey, we're in part of the top 10 groups to, uh, to get vaccine vaccinated. So, eh, got to wait for that to happen. But in the meantime, you know, we had our biggest, uh, 
biggest, uh, I guess, recorded number of, um, of uh, cases in one day. It was 600. Now, in a country of 97 million people, 600 is nothing really. But for us here in Vietnam, where we've got an entire year um, with just a drop in the bucket of hardly anything, you know, uh, this new Delta version is uh, kind of kicking butt around around town. So people are a little worried about that. So we're staying home. I have to start off my semester next week. First two weeks online. Ha! I don't think so. Probably four weeks, five weeks online before, uh, uh, with the best case scenario anyway, before we get things under control and get back in the classroom. But, um, you know, best thing you can do, wear your mask. Follow, follow the, you know, general guidelines of the uh, health administrations out there. Wash your hands social distancing, keep people away from you, you know, don't go to public places, you don't have to. You can always order stuff in, order pizzas, order sushi. I've ordered sushi twice this week. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you don't need to go out uh, anywhere, so play safe and uh, stay COVID free. So that's it from me. So this was Camera Talk with Dr. Scott and brought to you by Modesty Photography, where we're here to save you money, give you little photo tips, introduce new lenses that you may or may not already know about, uh, get a little advice to beginners, um, answer questions if anybody has any questions. So, of course, leave comments below if you have any questions. And other than that, I want to wish you uh, a happy week. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you next week in the next video. All right. So take care. Bye bye. Here I am, Vietnam. Green is always to me.